So it's been about a month since I finished editing A Crisis of Harmony, and around three weeks since I released it. Those of you who have seen it, which I hope is all of you, will recall that I ended it with some skepticism that Sino-American relations would improve, skepticism which my interview subjects did not share. Sometimes you're just not happy to be right. There are a couple of recent polls out from Gallup and Pew which suggest that not only have American opinions on China not improved since last year, they've actually gotten much worse. Gallup's polling shows that just 20% of Americans have a remotely favorable opinion of the PRC. That's the lowest they've ever recorded. Now, in their same polls, that's comparable to the American opinion on Russia and just a few points ahead of Iran. But it's the more detailed Pew poll that's most interesting here, and I encourage all of you to read the entire thing. These are just some of my personal takeaways, the bits I'm still kind of chewing over myself. First, and this one jumped right out at me, a majority of Americans now favor limiting the number of Chinese students in the U.S. This was easily the most horrifying finding for me. Now, this was something I mentioned as one of Mike Pompeo's ideas, and I brought that up to show just how radical he truly is. I never expected that a majority of Americans would agree with him. Now, I can't tell you why it is that Americans think this is wise. Uh, Pompeo seemed to be afraid that Chinese students were spies, but it could also be driven by simple xenophobia or vindictiveness. And in a sense, it doesn't matter why. One would think that in a country allegedly so sensitive to its history, one would avoid advocating for anything that recalls the Chinese Exclusion Act. Now, as you'd imagine, there are some demographic distinctions here. Republicans agree more than Democrats, though nearly half of Democrats are still on board. The biggest gap is in age. Support falls to just a third among Americans under 30, which is the group most likely to have interacted with those students. I think that's significant. But speaking of demographics, my next point, white Americans have far more negative opinions about China than other ethnic groups. Now, this is most pronounced where Pew asks people if they view China as an enemy or just as a competitor. Now, as you can see, whites are twice as likely as Hispanics and more than three times as likely as blacks to say enemy. But it's not just here. If you look through the polls, you'll see that whites have a significantly lower opinion of China in general, are more likely to support an ongoing trade war, are a lot less likely to trust President Biden on China-related issues, and even have lower opinions of Xi Jinping. I really don't know what to make of this just yet. Without the crosstabs, I can't see how politics line up with this. It is possible that this is largely, even principally, explained by relative party affiliation among these racial groups. If that's not the case, then I really don't have an answer, except that whatever that answer may be is probably bad. On the other hand, education doesn't matter as much as you might think. See, while party affiliation, age, and race were all significant factors in determining opinion, education isn't nearly as significant, at least not on certain issues. College graduates are at least less likely than non-graduates to view Chinese students as a threat, but they're only marginally less likely to call China an enemy, and their opinions on the trade war are nearly identical. If you were prepared to chalk these differences up to simple ignorance, then you might want to think again. But if you wanted to get some good news out of this, or at least something that can be interpreted as good news by certain members of the elite press, then there's this. There is one issue here where rightists and leftists are closer to each other than they are to the center and it's on prioritizing human rights. Of particular significance here, if you look at this poll, is the exact wording of the statement to which these people are agreeing. Namely, the U.S. should try to promote human rights in China even if it harms economic relations with China. This is quite a commitment, and will be interesting to see just how consistent these people remain given that any non-military intervention is going to entail ceding some economic ground. For example, it would be interesting to see how this will affect opinions on the Trans-Pacific Partnership, which, had the U.S. remained a signatory, would have been a big step towards containing China. But while there was general approval among Americans for the TPP, it was less so on the fringes, with opposition among figures as far afield as Donald Trump, Bernie Sanders, and Elizabeth Warren. One wonders if the people surveyed in this poll who agreed with this statement would now approve of joining the TPP if it would result in the containment of China. 
There is some talk that this will be one of the big challenges to the Biden administration. Finding a way to satisfy people's desires to be tough on China while not making any trade deals that those same people will perceive as being anti-worker. Now, in conclusion, this was something I expected, but not necessarily like this. Given the increasing public pressure for Biden to be tough on China, and the same poll shows that many people are skeptical of Biden's ability to handle China, this bodes pretty poorly for future relations between the two countries. Most likely, this means that the bad times for Asian Americans are likely to continue as well, because people seen as foreign tend to suffer most during times like this. Unfortunately, things may get even worse if politicians opt to use fear of China to rally voters. There are plenty of choices for the American enemy of the moment right now, but the PRC is the one that seems to animate everyone. If I was skeptical about the future before, now I'm just worried.